for sure, is that there are a number of parallels you can take from what you saw those people do, which has to do with raising finance. Okay, some of you might say, what, where is this guy going on? <laughs> well, the reality of the matter is the following. A person will do stunts you saw on screen only after a lot of preparation, immense confidence in this letting go and flying down, as well as, um, you know, that, that perseverance, because as you develop the skill, to develop the skill to perform at that level, you have to persevere. I'm sure that there were a couple of, of moments where things might not have been as, as precise as they were developing their skill. And if there is one um, thought I'd like to give with you today is that, that you know, these, these three ingredients have to be a lot of what you're doing as you go to raise finance. You're going to have to persevere, you're going to have to practice and prepare, okay? And you're going to have to have confidence and build the confidence inside that you can do what you need to do, that is get to raise the finance. But obviously, it's, so it's not just about going there now half prepared or even, even three quarters prepared. You can even never be prepared enough. Um, and we keep this in the back of our minds. We start to think about, you know, it's, it's raising finance, asking somebody to invest with you is almost tantamount to getting somebody to, to, to jump a tandem jump with you, okay? And you tell him, no, trust me, no one's going to work. It's like, if the guy trusts you and you've convinced him, he'll jump with you. If the person is petrified, has no trust in you, all the ways you're doing things, he's going to be like, but well, why are we doing this? Should this be tight, tight properly? Is, are we safe? Why are we going to make a move? No, hold on. He'll drive you nuts. And that's the same like having an investor with you who doesn't trust you, doesn't understand what you're going in for as a journey. And these are all cues we're deriving from what we've seen on screen. So I'm totally not connected with the right word of finance. So, yes, I'm an accountant by profession, and this is more intro about myself. I, I work at KPMG, involved in, in transactions, uh, in finance, through the capital market, but have also had um, a number of startups, even before I had joined KPMG, um, working in the garage of some of my mates, you know, and seeing ideas turn from, from a concept into, into fruition. Um, it's a passion, so for example, I'm also involved in, in NGOs, such as um, JCI, I'm currently the chair of M Enterprise in Malta, it's something I really believe in, okay? And it's through an event like this, getting people together, that we're going to build a community, because we more than needs a community in this space. Agenda for the day, that's the structured part that comes to me. Uh, we'll be covering a couple of matters, not too much. We have 20 minutes, I believe, so we'll go hit on directly. First, we'll run through options, okay? Financial options you could um, resort to, potentially, in, re in starting your, your, your business. I'll also share some insights onto the practicality or the existence of these options in Malta. Because albeit you will hear of some nice sexy words, but when you want to distill to what there is in Malta, yes, I have to be honest, it is still bleak or embryonic in stage. But if we work at it together, then all the parties have to, to contribute to this process, we can see a, 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 an interesting future. So we'll talk about that. But then we won't just stop there. I then want to flip the coin a bit into the practical insights. What about if you are going to now raise finance? Let's talk about some real practical insights on, on how to, to sort of really perform well at this. And I'll also give a bit of a slant of wearing the shoes of the investor. What are they looking for? So hopefully you're well prepared or increasingly become prepared to entertain the raising of finance. How does that sound? Good? So, the easiest. Um, like put together. Where would you start in, in, in raising funds? Well, obviously, you could start with your own funds, okay? Um, if you're wealthy enough, and if you're wealthy, let me sit down and have a coffee with you, I'd be very glad to help. Not really. But if you're wealthy enough, you can start your own business, okay? With your own capital. But the reality of the matter is that if the business has a really good potential, you probably will need further funding, and most of us aren't blessed with infinite um, uh, uh, sways of cash. So then you can tend to the family, friends, and foods. Okay, let's, let's get it more politically correct. Family, friends, and people who are, are all people in the last category. But let's start with the first two, the family and friends. These are people who, you know, you can share the passion of what you see. They, they, they actually believe in you and they're putting money because they trust yourself. Or probably as they might along the journey have started to commit themselves to the project. They start to believe that it's a commercially viable business. But the reality is probably it's the family link, there's the link that helps um, close the trust gap that you would even be facing money. The fools category does exist as well. It's not that they're fools, but it's just that because of they hear about something, they might be a friend of a friend, and they start to get roped in, and they are really not so sure about why they're invested in it, but it sort of appears interesting to them, and they pays their money for it. Some people do have some extra cash, they're lucky. Okay? But this category does exist. 
there's a, a very then big difference when you move from that category to the categories below, which are more of a third party nature. And there's, there's no real direct um, ties with those, with those candidates. Before moving there, just to dwell a bit on it, obviously bringing family, friends into um, your business does pose its own challenges, okay? Some people, I'm sure you've heard, have, have, have mottoes such as they will never do business with, with family members. Um, the reality is if, if things are going down to hell fast, it's not only that the, your project, your baby is, is failing, that's already quite a, a tough, tough to stomach, but you're also going to be hurting or negatively impacting close ones, making the, the, the pill even more bitter as well. So you have to keep that in mind. And I believe a good, a good uh, practice here is to really be comfortable and be sure that the family member who's committing the funds to this project, you know, is not putting too much skin in the game that they can be really badly bruised after. Okay? So, you know, try and, and, and manage that angle because you never know how it can go. But I think we should dwell a bit more now onto the ones of the category that is further down, down the road. And that's what I'm trying to do. Okay? We can with angel finance. Angel finance tend to comprise um, high net individuals, people have some, some significant financial resources, who not only commit the financial resources, but they also give more than just the finance. In fact, in Germany, angel finance is, is the, the form of finance that, that startup businesses love the most. Some would use a word, statement such as they're, they're more patient form of finance with longer investment horizons. Others will tell you not only that they give you the finance, but they also open doors to their networks. They will support you with your um, startup with their own ideas, with their own management advice, their own experience along you know, their own um, business careers. So angel finance is not just about finance, but it's also giving you that extra push. And in reality, as you're starting up, you're going to be probably very thirsty to get ideas, insights, either to cover areas of skill which are not naturally in your in your toolkit, or because you know it's a very specific um, matter and you'd like to get in some more experience to complement what you might already know. So keep this in mind. But the reality now, flipping to the more of these um, uh, startup ecosystem, we can call it that, uh, that, that way. You've got the reality that yes, in 2003, government tried to launch a motor business engine network, didn't really take off. Um, there are at least a recent report by the Motor Business Bureau, 2013, I believe, did look at different financing options, did um, uh, uh, identify that there were pockets or, or a number of, of wealthy investors that were investing, but it's very invisible in nature. And by the way, a small bracket here, um, I'll be quoting a couple of sources and I'd love to thank a colleague of mine. She was in KPMG's team, um, Morta, now she's is actually working in KPMG in Spain. She happened to do um, uh, writing up a, a dissertation for an MBA on uh, financing, you know, uh, tapping into attracting acquiring finance in order by innovative um, startups. So there's a lot of research she's doing currently and I'll be sharing with you um, some of the snippets. It's not yet published, but she gave me the, the ability to sort of share some of her insights along with you today. So in reality, the, the um, angel network is not really there, but there are pockets. And there are people that are comfortable to go for it. The reality as well is that more tend to prefer certain type of investments or certain type of businesses. You probably find it easier for a Maltese to start up a copycat type of business rather than commit funds to an innovative business, something which is they haven't seen, they couldn't sort of relate to. Okay, because the, the Maltese mentality <coughs> to an innovation or entrepreneurship is a bit, I think it's still, still got some journey to, to, to go through. Um, at the same time, obviously, with events like these, the more we spread the word, um, the more we manage to build conduits, we could start to see certain business angels um, looking at the model. But there's another small stat to keep in mind. From research, it's shown that angels like to invest in their own communities, or in their own countries. So again, there is a bit of a barrier. We don't build our own local um, uh, angel community, then it's going to be a bit more difficult to convince a foreign um, angel community to come and invest in the world, or in a multi startup. But we might hear of different experiences on them in this run. So, okay, angel investors, they'd be ready to go in for the longer run, they give you more than just cash, um, not so yet present in water, but they do exist. So, if we keep talking about it, we might find where these invisible hands are. Moving down in the pecking order, then you move into the area of private equity. Okay, now private equity in terms of venture capital, those, uh, this is where you, end, you introduce the form of financial intermediation. So, in the case of the business angel investor, that's a person, he's investing his own funds. 
in venture capital, you tend to have a venture capital fund, okay, so funds of third parties, being intermediated by a person and matching them up with the stuff or the business which is going to be using that fund. Obviously, we're moving into a, um, a realm of, of, of maybe more engineering, more sophistication, and these are looking to generate um, returns from significant growth opportunities. What's the problem here when you are an innovation-based startup? Well, if you're an innovation-based startup, there probably is a bit of technological development that still has to go through before you can even assess the potential for um, significant growth. So the likelihood is that you might be too early stage, many a time, for venture capital funds. To prove the point, um, research that was undertaken shows that out of the um, 3.4 billion um, uh, euros that was invested in, uh, in 2013 by venture capitalists, this evening PCA staff, only 3.2% um, were actually um, committed to a seed type of finance, so early relays, seed finance, early stage finance. Whereas then you have around 55% going into the early stage financing. And we look a bit at the job of how this gets, gets allocated. So what it means is that, again, to get to venture capital, you have to drive your business a bit forward. You have to make sure you are prepared and now you can show or start to really sell the story of the, the real upside or the, the significant growth potential. There's an area now which has caused mine, which is in the corporate support. Okay? You don't read too much about this, and maybe it is, 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 it's me wishing to, to fix um, or patch an area which is currently uh, not there. But what is happening in more than what is corporate support? Well, there are reasons why a business, a, a corporate, some other individual, might want to invest into um, other businesses. Okay, there could be a strategic time, there could be a strategic fit. You're seeing companies, for example, finance services, financial services companies, realizing that in today's day and age, the way to compete is moving more into how you harness technology to get to your end customer. So you're now starting to see financial services companies invest in tech startup. That's a strategic reason. There are other ways you can play this, um, and this I've seen happen in Moda, whereby if you have a company that is developing something, it finds its first customer, okay, and develops a prototype funded by that customer, and maybe the customer then gets some benefit if that IP is then um, uh, developed further and cashed in. Likewise, and I know of another story in, in more than I share it with you, you can use the supplier. So, for example, this business, it was, um, we're talking about 10 years ago, and this was a person who was going to launch a magazine, um, it was a magazine which was involved in, in you know, uh, making lots of adverts and going you know, to different doors and selling it through a magazine. But the person needed capital to start it, and what they did is they went to the printer and they arranged the printer, they said, oh, this could be big, but it not Cash to pay and in this phase, quite frankly, then your, your first few runs might, might not deliver the goods. Um, the printer decided to support it, and this then into one of, I would say, the leading, um, at least up to recently, the leading um, printed sort of door to door type of, of, of sales magazines locally. And this all started thanks to a bit of a tie up with a corporate strategy. So, this is an area, and I give the last example where I think we should start to use immediately whilst we develop the others. Another good example is um, you have a number of family businesses, okay, family groups, they're growing, but they are constantly looking for ways to continue growing the wealth of that family group. They have more um, amounts to feed, the demands for growth in family businesses tend to be greater than in, in, in almost other types of businesses because of various imperatives. So they are now finding, obtaining new ways to invest and continue sustaining the growth of their business through corporate sort of um, uh, investment in certain startups. Again, we have still some journey to travel here, but the, the, there's a piece which we get to later is that it's not just about the source of finance. We also need to ensure that we're well prepared on those who are not on the doors to acquire finance, okay? Because these corporates then go to certain experiences which then, you know, uh, push them off, you know, put them on the whole, the whole, the whole uh, journey. So we need to make sure we look at that side as well. But corporates could be interesting. What about government support? Well, government support, there are a number of, of, of initiatives we are seeing. Okay, so there are about three incubation centers. There's the middle one in, in, in a small city. There's the one that's now recently launched in university. There's the one at Cordine. There are um, things like Digital Games Fund, launched I think 2013, where it's giving funds for, for media and for um, investment in, in, in certain digital types of, of software and games. 
you also have things such as the bio. Uh,